the doctor just he kept shuffling me along and saying, you know what, it's all in your head. As it turns out, he was right. But you know, it, it was it was a pretty serious issue, and because the symptoms are so across the board, it does make it very difficult to diagnose. That's kind of like what Lester talking about. It's dealing with this uh, this particular period of time when you haven't been diagnosed yet, and uh, people are reacting to you, including doctors, uh, in a way that is not helpful. Uh, other people, and it doesn't just involve this disease, but others. Right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, anyone who looks, feels, acts kind of differently than the norm in society, we get the looks and no real help in dealing with it. That's why the book is called Alone in My Universe. Is because, you know what, we all have friends and family and we all have people we're very close to, but at the end of the day, when you're dealing with a medical condition, you're really dealing with it on your own. And I've actually had family members who've gotten very upset with me because of the title of the book, because they say, look, I was there, my kids were there, this person, this person, this person, and I have to explain to them, you know, if you read the book, it is actually a tribute to all of our friends and all of our family who helped us along the path and loved us and cared for us, especially on those days where we were getting the nasty looks when we were walking around in public. But at the end of the day, we're still battling this disease totally on our own. Before we get back to the most important part of the book, which I think is the, the dealing with it, the coping, um, describe it a little bit, if you, if you can, sure. physically, what, what, what does it look like? Well, SMI is the overproduction of growth hormone. So if you are if you start suffering symptoms when you're in your pubescent years, you are likely going to have the issue known as gigantism. Uh, if you get it when you're later in life, the symptoms are slightly different. They're similar but different. You get the massive growth of the body, but because our bones have set and our body is pretty much what it is, you get a lot of severe joint pain issues because literally your body is growing and there's no place for your body to deal with this new size. This is also why you get people with, with extremely large, enlarged hands and feet. Uh, some of the nicknames that I heard over the years was baseball glove hand and banana hands and sausage fingers. It, it's, uh, and you know what, we, one of the people who's in the book talks about how uh, their friend referred to them as having Fred Flintstone feet. Uh, some of the other symptoms include, you know, like I said, facial changes, severe headaches, excessive sweating. It, it's, it's a very socially undesirable disease. Well, you get that a lot. I was called a hypochondriac by my doctor for, like I said, the better part of a decade. But because this disease is considered a rare disease, only about 20,000 people in the United States are diagnosed with it. And the number again? Are only about 20,000. Wow, my gosh. Is yeah. it, you know, is it always as overt? Is it always as noticeable physically as, say, Richard Keel, you mentioned him, and, and Andre the Giant? I wouldn't say that it's always that overt. We have members on six different continents, and we have people in all levels of the disease. We have people who are very noticeably acromegalic, and we have other people who... Seriously, as someone who's been a patient advocate for years, I would not know if they didn't tell me. Right, okay. It's all how the disease manifests itself within the person. Well, the picture of you on the back, there's nothing that stands out. That, that's true. That's also just a headshot of me. Uh, at, at my largest, I, I've actually lost a lot of weight, and that took a lot of work. And my maximum after I was diagnosed I had grown to be 340 pounds. 
Okay. And, and, so, I, I, and I'm only six foot three, and none of that was muscle. Currently, I am down to about 220, 230, depending on the day. Congratulations to you. That's awesome. Thank you. And you know what? It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of discipline. And I have to watch my diet because there are days where I want to go to the gym. And honestly, I'm a, I have to go to the gym because I will gain the ba weight back very quickly if I don't maintain. But, you know, on those days where I can't go to the gym because I'm physically unable, I have to be very careful about what I eat that day. And that's a large part about what our organization is about, is about being your own advocate, about taking care of yourself, because honestly, if as a patient, if you are not your biggest advocate, no one else in the medical community is going to worry as much about you as you do. Well, that's probably true of a lot of disease, there's also a lot of emotional baggage. And honestly, it's, it's very sad to say, but I talk with a lot of members on a regular basis who are really dealing with severe, severe depression. And that's one of the things that honestly I do not understand about the, the disconnect of the medical community is their inability or lack of desire or whatever to prescribe people with severe medical issues into some sort of therapy because our members who do get therapy do benefit from it greatly. Hey, Wayne, in your book you talk about uh, managing negative energy. Could you expand on that a little bit? Absolutely. When you're